The Miami Grand Prix was the most successful race in Formula One has ever had in the United States. But that doesn't mean that it went off without a hitch. There were plenty of problems that the fans and drivers were complaining about. So what did the organizers say was a necessary evil for the race? And what did Sergio Perez call a joke? Stay tuned. First up, American Surge. The Miami Grand Prix was a big moment for Formula One. The sport is not like others where they have a natural national league. Instead, it is truly international. Drivers, teams, and organizations are from different countries and nationalities, and F1 travels around the world looking for the best circuits and best fans. But at the end of the day, F1 is a business, and for the longest time, the biggest untapped market was the United States. Under Bernie Ecclestone's direction, F1 had been trying to break into the U.S. for years, but never had too much success. When they had been able to race there, it was a disaster. In 2005, a technical controversy related to tire manufacturers ended in only six cars starting the race. For a sport that was already struggling to attract American fans, this didn't help. But in the last few years, there has been a surge in popularity for F1, even in America. It's thanks to new ownership and new direction, the Netflix series Drive to Survive has had one of the biggest impacts on viewership the sport has ever seen. So with the US finally ready, cities were putting their hands up to hold races. Miami secured a lucrative contract that involves F1 waiving the hosting fee that can cost up to $55 million. And next year, Las Vegas will be holding its first F1 race since 1982. It's a good time to be an American F1 fan. If you are in Europe or Asia, then you better get used to some big time differences while watching. Everything's bigger in America, and the Miami Grand Prix was no exception. The organizers built their own circuit that opened just days before the race weekend. The track weaved through garden areas, grandstands, villas, and clubhouses, and was bordered by trademark Miami palm trees. It even had a yacht club that threatened to rival Monaco. But by the time the race rolled around, it was clear that things were a little different than advertised. The marina was a fake marina with fake water, and it wasn't just the surface of the marina that was criticized. Drivers had a lot of complaints about the surface of the racetrack, too. Alpine driver Esteban Alcon said that the surface was a disaster and that it made overtaking near impossible. He thought it was part of the reason Sebastian Vettel and Mick Schumacher collided. Ocon went on to explain, You can't go side by side with a car. There's zero grip offline. It's like driving on slicks in the wet when there's one dry line. Another problem with the track was a chicane that was too tight for most of the drivers. Verstappen said that if he were still driving a go-kart, he might enjoy it, but not in an F1 car. Ricardo didn't mince his words. He said that parts of the track were Mickey Mouse, implying that they were unprofessional and unorganized. Drivers and pundits have called for the track to be fixed by next year. But at least fans could enjoy themselves. The event was full of DJs, performers, and celebrities to make it feel like a festival. Why did Perez think Red Bull's strategy was unfair for him? And is Christian Horner accusing Aston Martin of stealing their ideas? Don't go anywhere because all all of that is coming up next. Next, missed races? Miami was one of 23 races this year, the most of any season in Formula One history, but this year has also been the beginning of a new era of regulations, and the two might not be going so well together. That's because parts of the regulations are financial. This year, there is a $140 million budget cap on teams, which is designed to level the playing field, and we can already see teams holding back. After Mick Schumacher crashed during qualifying in Saudi Arabia, the Haas team decided not to let him race the next day so that they could save money. They had calculated that if Mick had another accident, there could be serious trouble later in the season. Now Red Bull team principal Christian Horner is complaining about the budget cap. He's been calling for an increase to the 140 million figures because of inflation, an energy crisis, and increased cost for freight transport. Red Bull's rivals, Ferrari and Mercedes, both agree that there should be an increase, and according to Horner, it's not just for competitive development. 
but could determine the top team's participation. He said, seven of the teams would probably need to miss the last four races to come up with the cap this year. If that many teams were forced to pull out, surely Formula One would intervene. The reputation of the sport would be significantly damaged if only six cars were racing by the end of the year. But others are not convinced. Alpine boss Otmar Svasnauer said that they had anticipated inflation and other teams should have too. He thinks that if the rule is just going to be changed when there's pressure, there's no point in having the rule. What's one way that teams save on development costs? They can copy someone else. Of course, this is strictly forbidden in Formula One and even reverse engineering is not allowed. Each team has to prove that they came up with designs entirely by themselves. But they can take inspiration from others. But when Aston Martin showed up at the Spanish Grand Prix, it looked like they took a little more than inspiration from Red Bull. The car was branded the Green Red Bull for its similarities. The FIA then investigated the Aston Martin designs but found that there was no breach of regulations. And unfortunately for Aston Martin, it didn't seem to help anyway. Sebastian Vettel and Lance Stroll both finished outside of the points in P11 and P15. But Vettel is still hoping that in time the upgrades will bear fruit. He said that while it didn't work out for them in Spain, it would take them in a better direction for the future. Christian Horner said that this team would complete a full investigation into whether or not any of their intellectual property could have been leaked to the Aston Martin team. And it's not Aston Martin's first controversy for copying designs. Back in 2020, when the team was named Racing Point, they got in some hot water for copying the design of the 2019 Mercedes. Rival teams launched a protest, and after an investigation, Racing Point were deducted 15 points and fined 200,000 euros. Some didn't think the penalty was harsh enough because the team was still allowed to compete, and at the tail end of the season, they scored two podiums and won a race. Meanwhile, in the Red Bull garage, there might be trouble. The car is not the problem. Adrian Newey and the team have done it again with the RB18, but at the Spanish Grand Prix, the politics of the team were on show. In a race where they had to fight off the Ferraris and the Mercedes of George Russell and Red Bull had to make some tough strategic choices. Sergio Perez was on the radio midway through the race asking for Verstappen to move out of the way for him so that he could attack Russell. He had the fresher tires and thought that their best shot of winning would be by taking down Russell first. Instead, they pitted Verstappen first and Perez was able to overtake the Mercedes, but later on in the race, Perez was told to move aside for his teammate, who eventually went on to win. Perez's engineer told him that he was on a different strategy to Max and that he should let Max pass. Sergio wasn't too happy about that and he replied that it was very unfair and by the time the race ended, he hadn't cooled down either. When an interviewer asked him if he thought that he could have fought for the win, he said, I think so, especially at the beginning when I gave the position to Max, thinking I was going to get it back later, but then we swapped strategies. He went for the three stop strategy, I went for the two. He also said that he was going to discuss the issue of team orders after the weekend. Perez is performing so well that it might become another tricky driver pairing for Red Bull, who have experienced this before with Daniel Ricciardo and before him, Mark Webber. Do you think that there will be conflict in the future between Verstappen and Perez? And will Verstappen need Perez to win the championship? Let us know in the comments below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.